As a predator Piotnitskisaurus probably hunted other small dinosaurs and possibly even those slightly larger than itself, it is also almost a certainty that it would scavenge the carcasses of dead dinosaurs when able, since scavenging is a frequent and often observed feeding strategy in most predatory animals that are capable of killing their own prey. Megalosaurus holds a special place among paleontologists as the first dinosaur ever to be named in 1824, however it was discovered in 1676. This dinosaur not only hunted plesiosaurs or washed up fish, but probably used several hunting strategies. It was one of the smartest of the dinosaurs of the time and probably adapted its hunting style according to the prey that was available. Because of its potential large size, Torvosaurus has been speculated by some to have been a scavenger that used its larger size to intimidate and scare off smaller theropods. However this large size would have given it an advantage in dealing with larger prey types that would have been too slow to run away even from a theropod the size of Torvosaurus. Based on bone morphology it is thought to have had short but very powerful arms. <laughs> There was not a huge variation between different genera's of large theropods during the late Jurassic, but Afrovenator is noted for having a particularly long humerus which would have given its arms more reach. Reconstruction shows that it was also a lightweight hunter built more for speed. It is believed that Baryonyx hunted fish in the same way as modern grizzly bears do. Paleontologists believe that these dinosaurs would sweep their claws back and forth across a river to snatch fish from it in the same way the grizzly snatches salmon from rivers. It was the first theropod dinosaur demonstrated to have been piscivorous, as evidenced by fish scales in the stomach region of the holotype specimen. It may also have been an active predator of larger prey. Suchomimus probably lived the lifestyle that has been speculated for all other spinosaurids, this meant that it probably roamed the semi-aquatic environments such as river deltas and lagoons of early Cretaceous Africa while specifically looking for fish, this fish specialization can be clearly seen in the long snout and lower jaw that contains many long, yet comparatively thin teeth that are better suited for seizing slippery prey like fish. Ichthyovenator is the first known spinosaurid of its kind since it appears to not only have one but two sails on its back and the only one known from Asia. Irritator probably supplemented its fish diet by scavenging carrion, something that all predators do when the opportunity presents itself. One feature that makes Irritator stand out from others of its kind is the presence of a sagittal crest that is part of the parietal bone. There are a lot of interesting facts surrounding Spinosaurus, it is also one of the first dinosaurs to have been identified as the first possible swimming dinosaur. It is believed that these dinosaurs walked on all fours when they weren't in the water. The distinctive spines of Spinosaurus, which were long extensions of the vertebrae were likely to have had skin connecting them, forming a sail-like structure, although some authors have suggested that the spines were covered in fat and formed a hump. Multiple functions have been put forward for this structure, including thermoregulation and display. It has been proposed that Spinosaurus was poorly adapted for bipedal terrestrial locomotion, and must have been an obligate quadruped on land. Yangchuanosaurus is often likened to fulfilling the same ecological niche as Allosaurus, except in Asia instead of North America. Not only does Yangchuanosaurus have a similar morphology to Allosaurus it also had access to similar prey items such as stegosaurs and sauropods, it had a characteristic growth on top of its nose as well as smaller horns and ridges, and also possessed a tail that made up half of its total length, the first digit of its foot was a small dewclaw. The three outer toes were used to bear weight and each was equipped with a large claw. Many people often think that Synraptor will be another dromaeosaurid dinosaur, when in actual fact it was a medium-sized theropod. Although not the largest of the Asian theropods of the time, it would have likely been near the top of the food chain. In this position it would have likely hunted smaller dinosaurs and possibly juvenile sauropods before they grew too big to be attacked.
As the most abundant large predator in the Morrison Formation, Allosaurus was at the top of the food chain, probably preying on contemporaneous large herbivorous dinosaurs, and perhaps even other predators. Some paleontologists interpret Allosaurus as having had cooperative social behavior, and hunting in packs, while others believe individuals may have been aggressive toward each other, and that congregations of this genus are the result of lone individuals feeding on the same carcasses. There is dramatic evidence for Allosaur attacks on Stegosaurus. Sorophaganax was exceptionally large for a Jurassic theropod, and could have rivaled both Tyrannosaurus of the Cretaceous for size, but the price of being such a large creature means that they would not have been as numerous as smaller predatory dinosaurs. Some paleontologists consider it to be a species of Allosaurus. Neovenator is one of the larger theropod dinosaurs known from Europe. Despite its large size however, its bones indicate that it was of a slender, grassle build. This would have reduced weight and increased its speed, suggesting a predatory lifestyle more suited for faster prey. It may have possessed integumentary sensory organs on its snout, they were used for other purposes, such as sensitivity to pressure and temperature and controlling jaw pressure. Some of the most noteworthy features of Ea carcharia are the enlarged bone growths above the eyes, these features likely served a display purpose, and may have been colored differently to the rest of the head. Concavenator most striking feature is the protrusion above its hips that is caused by the extension of two presacral vertebrae, it's speculated that these vertebrae would have supported either a sail or hump structure. Some have even suggested that it could have been used to store fatty tissue to better survive prolonged periods without food. Scientists really don't know the purpose of Acrocanthosaurus spines. Some paleontologists have speculated that the spines were necessary to keep the dinosaur cool by allowing it to dispose of heat like a heat sink. Other scientists believe that as was used to make the dinosaur look bigger to ward off other predators. It wasn't only a fierce and agile hunter, but also fairly fearless and would hunt some of the larger sauropod species. Carcharodontosaurus was able to lift animals weighing a maximum of 450 kilograms in its enormous jaws. Its name name was chosen because the teeth are sharp and serrated in a similar manner to the great white sharks, something that meant they could slice through the flesh of prey like sharp knives. Its brain exhibits features that hail back to the early archosaurs with similarities being seen in other reptiles such as crocodiles and turtles. The real interesting thing however is that the brain layout of Carcharodontosaurus is different to those of birds, and this reveals a growing evolutionary trend in dinosaurs that it was not part of. bought from a Moroccan fossil dealer. The only known fossil of Saroniops is of the upper eye socket. This material is unlike any other known theropod of the time and location, and displays enlargement of the bone growth, something that may have been the underlying support for eye crest displays in the living dinosaur. Tyranotitan seems to differ from other discovered Carcharodontosaurids in that it has proportionately tiny forearms, something that is similar to the Tyrannosaurids. Paleontologists are confident that it does not represent a Tyrannosaurid because the geographical isolation of South America. Its teeth do not seem to be as well developed as those of others of its group such as those seen in Carcharodontosaurus. The fossil remains of Mapusaurus were discovered in a bone bed containing at least seven individuals of various growth stages. 
Paleontologists speculated that this may represent a long-term, possibly coincidental accumulation of carcasses, some sort of predator trap, and may provide clues about its behavior. It could have preyed upon dinosaurs like Argentinosaurus that had bones that were simply too big to bite through. If the pack hunting theory is true then it may have worn down an Argentinosaurus with multiple bites, these wounds would that lead to blood loss and infection which would then bring the huge dinosaurs down. Gigantosaurus was one of the largest known terrestrial carnivores, but the exact size has been hard to determine due to the incompleteness of the remains found so far. It may have been relatively fast moving, with a calculated maximal running speed of 14 meters per second. It would have been capable of closing its jaws quickly, capturing and bringing down prey by delivering powerful bites. Sizing Fukuiraptor has actually been quite difficult, initially it was thought that the holotype was a juvenile, but other remains from other Fukuiraptor individuals indicate the juveniles were actually smaller. It really does not deserve the raptor part of its name, this is because when it was discovered, one of the large hand claws was interpreted as being a killing claw on the second toe, similar to other dromaeosaurids that have the epithet raptor. Baharosaurus is potentially synonymous with Delta Dromaeus, another theropod from the early late Cretaceous of North Africa, this would possibly make it the largest ceratosaur. More specimens would be needed to more accurately classify it, and to determine its relationship to Delta Dromaeus. With very comprehensive and well-preserved hand and foot remains, Australovenator has been made a topic of various research papers studying the dynamics of theropod appendages. Its fingers were capable of extension far beyond those of any other sampled theropod, with only Dilophosaurus having capabilities even near it. Megaraptor was initially described as a giant dromaeosaur, known primarily from a single claw that resembled the sickle-shaped foot claw of dromaeosaurids. The hands were unusually elongated, bearing sickle-shaped claws even more recurved than those of spinosaurids. 